This is my explanation for two spectators, two cards. I came up with this a number of years ago. A standard moves to create a really strong, strong effect. It's great for the guys out there who work professionally um, as a walk around piece. Um, I do use this a lot actually. I mean, it's probably in the top five tricks I use most often if I really think about it. Because it's, as I say, very impromptu, involves two spectators, and this is how it works. Cards can be shuffled, two are chosen. Free choice, completely free choice. Okay, you don't know what these are. Let's contrast them a bit better. Queen of Spades and Seven of Hearts. Now, you don't know these cards, so this is what you do. You say to the first spectator, I'm going to take your card and mix it into the deck. Well, I would like you to keep hold of your card. So you take one card back, okay, and you're asking the other spectator to... to uh, keep hold of the card. Now you control the card at the top, I've just done a pass, but you can do a shuffle or whatever. We've been through a lot of these um, things on some of the other tricks about how you control, I mean obviously the, the, the experienced guys don't need to be told anything, but the um, beginners, I've, I've got you know, the stuff I've explained in previous tricks, like the triple cut. Or, anyway, the point is, their card First spectator's card is now on the top. Now, this is something I just did one day years ago. And to some of you might might think, how does this work? It's just from doing it and doing it and doing it. I'm able to get their card, which is now top, to the number that they say between 1 and 15. And the way I've worked it is this. If I say between 1 and 15, 95% of the time, they're going to go with a number over 6. Okay? That's just the way it is. We'll deal with what, well, if they say three or 2, 3 or 4, we'll deal with that. But let's assume it's going to be over 6. Before I do anything, I thumb count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cards and keep a break at the bottom. Six card break at the bottom. Now if they say seven, which they often do, that's great. I just need to pass the six to the top, which will put their card seven. Again, this is something you will only be able to do by doing this and being brave. Because I say, name a number between one and fifteen. Now I've got six. Just say they say eleven. I've got to go from 6 and full count 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now that seems like a long time. But this is how I cover it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you're never looking at the cards. Obviously you're just you're engaging the spectators. So I've got a break above 6. I say, could you just name a number between um, 1 and 15. And they go 11. And I, I might even look at somebody else. And I say, sorry, what was that? As if, I didn't quite, but really, I did hear, but I'm pretending I didn't. So what number did you say? And then they'll, they'll repeat it, and in that few seconds I've been able to get ten cards counted. Now the thumb count, I'll walk to the camera here. Thumb count is very simple. You're holding the cards here, and this is, the, you're just going, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how you start. Keep a break. How many cards... Name a number between 1 and 15, 11, obviously even something like 9, then you just do 2. So if they say 9, I've got 6, I go 7, 8, and I'm done. That's the thumb count, and you just do it while you're talking. So, you are now going to give these cards to the first spectator. And what you've got to do is get the bottom cards to the top. Now, the more advanced guys will be able to do a pass, which is what I do. So that's just a matter of um, bringing the cards from the bottom to the top. Now, I'm aware that in the right of I didn't teach the pass. I don't think I'm going to right now, but basically it's just a matter of getting the cards to the top, but it's hidden. 
usually buy, I usually hide the, the bigger move like this, okay? Um, for the beginners, you can re you will get away with name a number between one and fifteen and put your hand out. Cut to the break and put the, those cards on top. You will get away with that. You just simply cut their cards. That's the simple way. So there's so there's ten. Okay. One, two on top. Okay? Okay, so let's just repeat. Their cards on the top, I've come counted six. Name a number between one and fifteen. Nine. Extra two. And then I do my pass and give them the cards. That puts their card obviously in the ninth or whatever position they, they, they the number they said. As I say, there's an act to this. Getting the thumb count, getting those extra thumb counts in just after they've said the number by a little misdirection. Uh, sorry, what was that? And um, what number did you say? You know. And when they re recreate the trick later, and because they're holding the cards, oh, they'll they'll be saying, "I held the cards and I counted the cards." But really, you've done your, your dirty work um, before they got the cards. So they take the cards and they count their card. Um, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where did I put that queen? Does it matter? Point is, um, their card will be at that. So say they say nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I always stop there on on, on, on that. So the cards are in the hand. These are these are just little bits that make this this, this thing stronger because they count the cards and I say, what did you choose? They'll name the card, the Queen of Spades. Then I say, what card is the ninth position? So it really builds up this idea that it's the card's gone magically to the position that they said. That gets a big reaction. Okay? And they've done all that. And you take the cards back and all you need to do is keep that queen on top. That's simple. Just get them in there. You can even do a false cut or whatever. Or a false shuffle. But you're keeping their queen on the top. So that's the first person. Then you go to the second person. And you say, uh, so say they picked the Ace of Diamonds, and you, because they remember they kept hold of their card. I remember the queen. This is on top here. All you do is swing, cut the top half over, so their card goes on top of the original card. Okay. Then you can do a triple cut, one to the break, bring it to the top, or pass, or whatever. Again, you're getting them to the top. Okay. Now, what you say to the second spectator is, I'm not going to put your card into any particular position. I'm just going to try and bring it to the top. This, in my work, gives me an excuse to do a few fancy cuts. Um, you don't need to. But basically, you're just doing any old false cuts, keeping them on the top. This is something I came up with. I might teach that on another, on another download or another book. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just messing about like this. And I'm saying, I will try to bring your card to the top. Okay. Okay. So I go to the second spectator, and I do a double lift. Which is great, because the first card shows up. I say, is that your card? Is my double lift. They go, no. And then they'll realize that that's my card. It's great psychology, this, because then you go to the second spectator. Oh, I tell you what. Then you say to the first spectator, okay, do me a favor. Let's isolate this thing. Put your hand out. You turn the double face down, take the card, which is now this person's card, and they, which is the Ace of Diamonds, and they hold that in between. Um, as you can see, I'm a big fan of these sort of cards changing in people's hands and changing places. But anyway, they've got the Ace of Diamonds there, and the Queen is on top. So then you go back to the second spectator and say, let me try again. A few more false cuts. And then I do another double lift and show an indifferent card. But the psychology here is great in terms of a real situation because I go, is that your card? And they go, no. And they think that is obviously that person's card. And this is how it works. I just turn the indifferent card over, 
take the top card and say show him the 10. Now this person usually won't even look, they'll just show him the 10. And it's all happening very quickly because they show the 10, which is the queen, he reacts, then she reacts, ah, that was the 10, now it's the queen. And then the, the dawning realisation is, well that's the queen, and that was the queen, what the hell is that? And that's the big moment, because when they turn that over and see it's the second spectator's card, the ace, it gets a massive reaction. Okay, so that's two cards and a spectator.